everybody will want to start saying in the choir now. <laughs> Amen. Thanks, guys. Wow. What a day that will be. But our Jesus, one day we're going to see. Amen. Amen. Stand with me, if you would, please, and turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 20, beginning at verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Jesus here is talking about something that we all kind of do all the time, and that's worry. Anybody here doesn't worry? Amen. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you shall drink, or about your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing, consider the lilies of the field? How they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth what you have need. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Thank you. You may be seen. Melissa was playing in the offertory again a few moments ago and said, leave it there. And the song goes like this. As if the world from you withholds all its silver and its gold. And you have to get along with meager fare. Just remember in his word how he feeds the little bird. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain and your soul is almost sinking in despair, Jesus knows the pain you feel. He can save and he can heal. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. When your enemies are assailed and your heart begins to fail, don't forget that God in heaven answers prayers. He will make a way for you and will, will lead you safely through. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. When your youthful days are gone and old age is stealing on and your body bends beneath the weight of care, he will never leave you then. He'll go with you to the end. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. The Course says, leave it there, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, surely He will bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Sometimes I think that we find that a little difficult to do, don't we? Let's be honest. We find it difficult sometimes just to place them in the hands of God. And I know that you know there's a lot of things here in this song and I, that each one of us in this building this morning can relate to. Because maybe there may be those here this morning that it says from your, your world from you withhold and silver and gold. Maybe, maybe today there's some here that have lost their jobs and different things and, and not faring as good as they used to. Well, he said here to just take it to the Lord and leave it there because he said he feeds the birds. If your body suffers pain, probably we can relate to that, can't we? And perhaps your health you can't regain. And your soul is almost sinking in despair. But it says Jesus knows the pain you feel. He can save and he can heal. Just take it to him and leave it there. When your enemies assail you and your heart begins to fail, don't forget that God in heaven <coughs> answers prayer because he makes a way for you. So take it to the Lord and leave it there. And then the last one says, when your youthful days are gone, and I, I'm sure most of us in here can relate to that. You know, you, we get to the point, I guess, in our lives that we remember our, our, our mind, our bodies say go and our minds say no. I mean, our minds say no and our bodies say go. That's what it should be. But I was thinking yesterday, even that yesterday at, at a funeral I was doing, and my cousin was there and her grandson was there, and he got to talking about uh, how he said, now, Granny, she, she, she wrapped up in her, in her coat because it was cold in the, in the funeral home. She said, man, I'm cold. He said, well, her grandson said, you stay cold all the time. He said, you and Papa will keep your house about 90 to 100 degrees. <laughs> and I looked at him and said, son, one day you'll get old. And the heat will feel good. But when your youthful 
evil days are gone and old age is stealing on your body bends beneath the weight of care. He'll never leave you then. He'll go with you to the end. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. <laughs> How do we leave our burdens with the Lord and leave them there? That's the question this morning. We say it's easy for us to say, and we can read what he says here, but, but how do we how do we do that? I think the first thing that we have to learn to do is that we have to learn to seek him before anything else. Because look what he says in verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. In other words, we seek God first. We seek him first and foremost in all things that we do. We need to understand this and seek Him and His righteousness. In other words, we are saying that we, and we're going to seek one who is going to listen to us. I appreciate what David had to say in the 40th Psalms when he got to talking about his faith persevering in, in trial. And he said this, I waited patiently for the Lord and He inclined to me and He heard my cry. We have to realize that if we're going to leave it with Him, we seek Him before anything or anyone. And say, Lord, you're going to hear my cry. In, in, in prayer, great. It really is. Because you see, we know that Jesus said, I'm one who's going to listen to you anytime, anywhere, and I'm going to supply your needs and take care of your needs and all your problems. So I was looking the other day, and, and it's aggravating. And anybody ever call somebody and get put on hold? Oh, that's so lovely. Or do they tell you, you know, you've you got to call in prescription different things. If you're calling from this one, you press this, 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 and this. What if? What if God's line was that way? What if God would use that familiar excuse when you called him, we're sorry, but all the angels are busy helping others. <laughs> and when the first one gets free, they'll take your call. So stay on the line. Your call will be answered in the order that's received. That'd break our hearts, wouldn't it? But then, or how about this? If you call and it says this, if you'd like to speak to Gabriel, press one. <laughs> or if you'd like to speak for Michael, press two. For a directory of other angels, press three. Yeah. If you'd like to hear King David sing a song while you're on hold, press four. <laughs> to find out if a loved one has been assigned to heaven, Enter his or her social security number, then press five. <laughs> For reservations at our Father's house, enter the following. John 3, 16. <laughs> For nagging answers about evolution, dinosaurs, the age of the earth, and where Noah's ark is, just wait till you arrive. <laughs> but God doesn't do that, does he? <laughs> or maybe you'd hear this. I'm sorry, but our office hours are from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Please call back on those days. Well, we hear enough of that, but God doesn't do that to us. God says, you seek me, and you call on me, and I will hear you, and I will answer your prayers. It's amazing, isn't it? To know that God hears each of us as individuals, and God says, you just call. I'll be there. That's the first thing in realizing this is why we can leave them with him. But I realize that we are still so human inside that, as Jeanette says sometimes, she calls out to God, but she certainly wants to help him along <laughs> with the answer. God doesn't need help with the answer. He just says, seek me first. You know, we're always, I think that we, uh, you know, the, the song talks about many things here. And, and, and uh, we, we find that there's many avenues of, of helping people and all that. And, you know, I used to, used to, when I was a kid, I would go to Dr. Boggs there in Russell. <clears throat> about like a horse doctor. <laughs> but I loved him. He could do everything. We can't do that now, can we? We've got to go to see our family physician. And then if we have a bad toe, we've got to go to the, another doctor. If we have something else special, we've got to go somewhere else. They all specialize in something different, and that's okay. But I'm glad to report today that Jesus himself specializes in everything. That's right, right. So he said, seek him first. Go to him first. So we seek the one who will hear us at all times. We seek the one who has compassion for us. And it broke my heart yesterday. I was doing a funeral of a man here in Greenup. And, and I knew after I got there, I, I realized I had seen him a couple of times. But I knew his sister. Matter of fact, my dad had done his sister's wedding uh, 
from 40 some years ago. I was just a kid. And yeah, all right. But you know, I, I get to thinking that, and I, I looked and there was there were no flowers. The only flowers that were there, the funeral home provided a couple of flowers that said the end of the casket. And those folks there were hurting. And it broke my heart to know that there's a family that no flowers, nothing, because there was no compassion. So I brought the message, and I, I brought the message about love and how that God loves those people there. And, and at the end of the service, <laughs> this gentleman's niece came up to me and said, I want you to know something. She said, I've never, I never go to church, never been to church. And that broke my heart. But she said, because of this today, you bring in the message and maybe because of what's happened to here. She said, I can see things a lot differently. She said, I can see things a lot differently. But you know what? I, can have, I had compassion and I love them. But more important, I tried to tell them that God has compassion greater than I do. And so we seek the one who has compassion. And that word compassion means love in action. You see, you see, I can only say to you that I love you. And there are many things that I can do to prove that. But every day of your life, Jesus said, I have compassion on you. And I'll show it to you every moment. Every moment of your life, he shows his compassion for you. So the first thing is, if we're going to leave him there, we must seek him before anything else or anyone else. The second thing I think that if we are going to leave them with Jesus as we should, the second thing we have to learn to do is turn to Colossians if you'd like to follow along with me in chapter 2. And we have to do some things no matter what happens. I know that we like to have a, all of us like to have that positive mental attitude that says that everything is going to be good. I've got news for you. Everything's not going to be good. The Bible says all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord to those who are called according to His purpose. We understand that. But everything's not going to be good in our life. I don't see sickness as good to you. I don't see death as good as it says. Rather, other than death, in the, the, the death of the saints, the sight of God is precious to Him. But, but we look at this and we think, wow, there are some things we have to do no matter what happens in our life. You know, say, sad to say sometimes that, that people think, well, Lord, now that I'm, I'm your child and I belong to you, there's nothing going to happen to me that, uh, that's going to be bad. Everything's going to be such a bed of roses. <laughs> These guys right here might look like roses, do you? <laughs> but I bet they've had some thorns in their life since they've been saved, haven't you guys? There's been some thorns in their lives, and there's been thorns in each of our lives. But no matter what happens, we have to keep making spiritual progress. You may not get that job you wanted immediately, but you don't quit. You may be sick and all these things, and don't get that immediate healing, but does that mean you quit? No, that doesn't mean that. It means you keep on making spiritual progress. Because look at what he says in verse 4 of, of Colossians chapter 2. He said, now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with per persuasive words. In other words, we have a need for progress in our lives spiritually because Satan is a deceiver and a liar. Satan will tell you God's not doing what he said he would do. But I want you to know something. God is doing in your life what he said he would do if you allow him to do that. If you leave it with him, leave it in his hands and in his care. Because Satan is a deceiver. He's a, he's a liar. So there is a need for us to keep on keeping, such as there is a need for children to keep on growing. Oh, I know the very moment that that new baby comes into your life, oh, I just wish I could keep it this small all the time. Well, you'd have a fortune in diapers and infamil or whatever it is. <laughs> but that's not life. There's a need for them to grow. There's a need for them to, have you seen the commercial? About this little boy who comes home and his dad fixes him some pudding. And his dad says, son, how'd you like the school day? And he keeps talking about it. He said, well, that, he said, he'll get better tomorrow. He said, I've got to go back again. <laughs> he said, you better give me a double. But what I'm saying is there's a need for growth in the life of an individual. And there's a need for spiritual growth in the life of a Christian. Because the fact of the matter is, I said, the devil's a liar, he's a deceiver. So, say, there is a need for that. And so look what he says in verse 5. 
For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. He said the nature of our progress is we are as an army, he says, in a sense. That we are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we are pilgrims on a journey. We're traveling, he said, so is there that progress that's there. You keep on going, keep on keeping on, no matter what happens. Because folks, you place in the hands of God. And we were talking in the Sunday school class this morning, in the men's class, and talking about God's will. And sometimes we, we say, you know, it's really hard to discern sometimes what God's will is. But as it was mentioned, God's will is right here. When we look in there, we'll find God's will for our lives. I guarantee you that. But so often we think, wow, Lord, you know, I, I may be a pilgrim on my journey here, but I don't know what your will is. Well, you just learn to walk by faith, and God will take care of that. You have to learn to believe God. You have to learn to, to let Him lead you, because we are a pilgrim, as a pilgrim traveling. And He says we are as a tree that, that's rooted. Look at He rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith. We are rooted in Him. There is a big tree across the road from us up there. We look at that all the time, and, and, the, and the leaves are always blowing, but it's a humongous tree. And I get to think, wow, that tree is so big. But, you know, what's amazing is, are those roots that's holding that tree in that ground. Especially when the winds come, because if they would come, it would come smash part of our building and right in my bedroom. But you look out and you think, wow, what roots that is holding that tree. Holding that tree. And you notice, guys, that when you go to dig out a, a, a root, a, a stump from the, uh, you know, from the ground and all these things, you just don't get a dig right down straight here because the roots go everywhere, holding it where it needs to be. And he says that's what we have to learn to do, that we learn to, no matter what happens, we're like that tree with our roots just keep on going and, and, and tugging and holding on. What roots do? They cling to it to keep you from falling. So he said, no matter what happens, he said, remember, you are that tree. You are as a building that's built up, he says. That's built up in him, in Jesus. There is nothing that my God can't do. But he said, leave it there. Just leave them with me. I'll take care of them. It's sort of like... How we were kidding Miranda the other day, and we were talking about our puppy dog. And, oh, excuse me, did I call it a dog? I'm sorry. But anyway, <laughs> my, my puppy dog, and I said, we're going to have to get a babysitter. And I said, Miranda, and, you know, we, we know that you're a certified babysitter, so we're just going to send her to Miranda's house <laughs> to take care of her because she's certified to do that, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> but the thing about it is that no matter what we do, we're always checking to be sure things are okay, right? We have children, and somebody else is watching. We always want to check on them. Well, most of us do. Some of you may say, "Keep them." I don't know. But, but the thing about it is, we're always checking on them because we want to be sure they're okay. But we leave them. We want to leave them in the hands of somebody that's capable of taking care of our loved one. I think sometimes, several years ago, we were trying to get folks to help take care of Jeanette's mother and father, and, and we always have to screen them and look to say, "We want somebody that's going to take care of them. That's really going to take care of them." Because we love them. Well, when you place it in God's hand, you leave it there because we know He'll take care. And His answer is going to be the right answer. What He does is going to be right. We may not see it at that point, but they are. So then, He says we are that, that building that's, that's built up. You see, God didn't finish with you. The very moment you know that you came into the world, you know, God began to mold you and shape you and make you. And when we got saved, then he began to spiritually mold us and make us. And God says, listen, I'm making you and molding you the way I want you to be. You're like that building. Like that building that's going up. When, we, when people go to build a home, build a house, they make the plans and say, here's the way we want it to be. Here's the way we want it done. So they put it in the hands of the contractor and say, here's how I want it done. Let me tell you, when you gave your heart to Jesus, you put your life in his hands and he says, you say, Lord, you build me the way you want me. 
Therefore, we're able to leave it with him. He said, not only as a building that's built up, he said, but even as a school that's being taught in one place, he tells us that. That we are, uh, he says, you have been taught. That we are being taught every day of what he can do for us. And then he says this. Hmm. And he said, and bounding in it with thanksgiving. I think sometimes that we have to no matter what happens, we, we, we keep spiritual progress perhaps as a, as a river that's, that's flowing, abounding, that's overflowing. We just keep on, keep on, keep it on. Not only do we keep making spiritual progress, but I think the other thing is that we have to, uh, you know, no matter what happens, we, we have to learn to watch out for spiritual perils in our life. Hmm. Look at verse 8. Beware lest anyone cheat you from through philosophy, cheat you through philosophy and empty the seat according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of Godhead boldly. And you are complete in him who has the head of all principality and power. We have to watch out for spiritual perils. We have to realize we didn't never want to be captured by the enemy. And Satan himself is out to capture people, isn't he? So we have to watch out for spiritual perils. We have a lot of philosophies in this world today. A lot of teachings that are not biblical. A lot of teachings that, that man has thought of and said, here's the way it is. And there are many people falling for that. But he said we have to be watching. Watch out for those perils. Watch out for those things that, that causes us to be captured by the enemy. Then he finally he says in verse 11, he said, In him you also were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, Having wiped out all the handwriting and requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Wow. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made, pub, made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Folks, we have to realize that we have to draw on our spiritual provisions that we have. Our spiritual provisions that we have. Like our physical provisions. You've heard me say, if they stop making all kinds of food, as long as you've got peanut butter, we're going to live. <laughs> wow. Don't have to have anything else. Just jiff peanut butter. Smooth. <laughs> but the thing about it is, we draw on our spiritual our spiritual things that God has given us, our spiritual vision that He's given us. He said you were circumcised in Him. We belong to Him. If you're saved today, you are His. Amen. And He said, draw on that. And He's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. Amen. Man, that ought to make us shout sometimes. Isn't it? And then, not only circumcising Him, but He said that we are alive in Him. Whoa. We are alive in Him. I was listening to one of our old podcasts uh, just the other day, and Jeanette was in the bathroom or someplace, and she came walking. And said, That's our choir singing, isn't it? And we were singing, Because He Lives. And you know what, folks? Because Jesus lives, I'm alive today. You're alive today. Right. So we draw on that and say, We're not dead. So, Lord, we just leave it with you because you're the one who gives life. <coughs> and He is. He's the one who gives us life. So we draw on that provision of knowing that we are alive in Him and knowing that we are free from the law in, in Him, the law. I, I'm glad to, you know, I wish that everybody in the world today could would live by the Ten Commandments. That'd be great, wouldn't it? If the whole world said, all right, we're going to follow those Ten Commandments. But you also have to realize that Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill the law. And He said, now we're under grace. I'm glad today. I'm so glad today that that we're not under that old law that says you've done this, so now we're going to stone you to death. We'd all get stoned. Well, you know, by rocks. Clarify that. <laughs> you can use the wrong kind of word today. <laughs> Sorry about it. You can use the wrong kind of word today, and people misunderstand you. But but we'd be 
killed, for a better word, for what we've done. But I'm glad that Jesus Christ said, I came to seek and to save those that were lost. I came to lay down my life. I come to, but when I'm, when he, and, and again, go back to James. So you'll ask me again what to say, won't you? That when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. You were on his mind when he was there. So he said that we are free from the law in him. And then he said in verse 15, and I love this part. <laughs> Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, spectacle of them and triumphing over them. He said that we can, we can draw on our spiritual provision knowing that we are victorious in him. Leave it there. How do we leave it there? We leave it there because we know that we have victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a, there's a song that <laughs> Missy's mom uh, had told me before. She said, there's two or three things you've got to do at my funeral. I said, what's that? She said, well, one thing is you've got to sing, I'm a winner either way. <laughs> the second thing is they better sing Amazing Grace. And the third thing is you better make my funeral funny. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that's the way it is, Missy. But I'm a winner either way, if I go or if I stay. That's because we have victory in Him. And we are a winner. Because we didn't do anything to earn the victory, but Jesus did. All the victories that we have, there's another song that says, How can I boast in anything that I've done? Oh, that's, that's the song that says, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. How can I boast in anything? Jesus has won the for me. That's what he's saying. That's how we can leave him there. That's how we can leave him there. Finally, I think Peter says it very plainly. The way that we leave him with him, he says, look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6 and 7. Matter of fact, it's in your bulletin. It says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care on him, for he cares for you. We know that we can leave it there. <clears throat> There's another song. You know it's coming. <coughs> Consider the lilies, they don't fall nor speak. That there's not a king with more splendor. Consider the sparrows, they don't plant or sow, but they're fed by the master who watches them. We have a heavenly Father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart. He really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider and then you will know. May I introduce you to this friend of mine who hangs out the stars and tells the sun he kisses the flowers each morning with dew, but he's not too busy to care about you. We have a heavenly Father above <coughs> with eyes full of mercy and a heart. He really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider the lilies and then you will know. didn't say we had to sing it pretty, but just believe it. Consider the lilies. You'll leave it there. No need to worry, he says. It's in my hands. It's in my care. So leave it. Leave your burden, whatever they might be, leave them with the Lord. But first of all, you need to leave the burden of sin with Him. Because Jesus went to Calvary. He said, bring it to me. I care. Father, this morning I praise you and thank you. Just for this
this time that you've allowed me to proclaim your word. And Father, I pray that I present it in the manner that you've given it to me this morning. And God, I just ask you to speak to hearts here today. Lord, there's many that need to make decisions. Lord, maybe they're hurting. God, maybe they just need that prayer. So, Father, we pray for them. We ask that you lift them up today. Lord, there may be those having to make decisions that they really don't want to have to make. So give them the strength. Maybe there's those who need to be saved. God, I pray you especially speak to those hearts today. Maybe those, Lord, who are going to need to follow you in scriptural baptism or become a member of this church. God, speak to those hearts. Lord, we pray your will be, be done. But Father, help us today to take our burdens to you and just leave them there. Thank you. Well, thank you in advance for what you're going to do in our lives. Thank you for taking our burdens. And we can always say in our heart, Lord, that no one ever cares for us like you do. Thank you. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Are your heads bowed?